Okay, you awesome geeks, here's the problem. You just finished a kick-ass project and now you're faced with a dilemma. Do I add lighting or not? The truth is for most of us, electronics can be complicated, confusing, or sometimes straight up intimidating. You don't know which LED to select. You don't know which resistor to use with it. Some of us don't even know what the resistor is for. Someone told you to use Ohm's law, but you don't know Ohm's law because you're not a lawyer. At the end of the day, all we want is some frickin' blinking lights on our frickin' project. So today we're going to simplify this and make it easy to understand. There are a lot of options when it comes to lighting your project, but for simplicity's sake today, we're gonna go with the Humble LED. Oh, and stick around to the end because I'm gonna share my secret sauce for making wiring LEDs super simple. Today, I'm gonna put LEDs into one of our kits. And if you're interested in one of these, you'll find details in the description below. So in this example, I wanna get some basic illumination. I wanna put some LEDs in these pre-cut holes. And I also wanna do a little bit of soft glow by recessing LEDs behind this detail. We have several goals for this episode today. We wanna to help you select the LED, choose the correct resistor and why, give you options for wiring them and help you solve the power problem. The most common question I get about electronics, and specifically LEDs, is how do I power them? When working with an LED like this, you can't just apply any amount of power, or specific voltage. You run the risk of burning out the LED. So to start, we're gonna lay out a simple circuit. We're gonna use two LEDs that are rated at three volts a piece. You have a power source on one end, and your LEDs on the other. This middle section here is where the work comes in. This is where we need to determine the type of resistor needed. The resistor is key. It limits or regulates the current flow between your power source and your LED. So the most obvious question is, how do you determine which resistor to use? This is where Ohm's law comes into play. Now let's hold on a second. We're about to do a little bit of math going forward, but don't let that stress you out. I'm about as good at math as a stormtrooper is hitting a target, but it's necessary to help you understand how all this is determined. The formula for Ohm's law is V equals IR. V for voltage, I for current, and R for resistance. What you need to understand is this formula can be rearranged in different ways depending on what you need to solve for. Before we select a formula, we have to determine how we're going to wire our project. And for this first example, we're going to wire in series. In series, this means that all LEDs will be wired together in a chain with the resistor in the front. In series, each LED will determine the amount of voltage it will consume. In this case, we have two 3-volt LEDs, so we'll need a minimum of 6 volts. No matter the power you're using, you want to consider two things, the voltage and amperage. Now, the LEDs we're using are two milliamps or 0.02 amps. And we're gonna be using a nine volt battery. Most good alkaline nine volt batteries will give you somewhere between 450 and 550 milliamps per hour. So for this purpose, I think our circuit will be good. In our circuit, we need to calculate for the current. So the formula we're going to use is I current equals V voltage over R resistance. We're going to use a nine volt battery as our power source and we're gonna have two three volt LEDs. So we need to subtract six volts from the two LEDs from the nine volts provided by our battery and we're left with three volts. So what this tells us is that our power supply has enough to cover the voltage, but we still need to deal with the remaining three volts. You can't leave them out there running around like an Ewok on a bender, things will go bad. So we'll divide the remaining three volts by 0.02. That's the amount of amps from the LED. This gives us 150 ohms, and that's the type of resistor we'll need to use for this circuit. And that's how you would wire a circuit in series. Honestly, it's not my preferred way of wiring multiple LEDs. I prefer parallel. I'm not saying that this, that parallel is the best way or the right way, I'm saying it's my preferred way. One of the many reasons I don't like running in series is that I've had trouble, specifically when using different types of LEDs. Like you and me, not all LEDs are the same. They have different levels of forward voltage. So sometimes when you put them in series, you can have things like uneven brightness or even complete LED failures. 
I also don't like series because if one LED in the chain fails, nothing works. Just remember all those aggravating fights you've had with Christmas lights. Okay, so let's talk about wiring in parallel. When you wire in parallel, you're adding a resistor to each LED. This means the voltage stays the same across all the LEDs. However, the difference is the amount of current that adds up. So in this case, the most important thing is making sure the power supply can handle the current that you need. My favorite way to power up lighting, especially when I'm doing things like a room build, is to use a wall power supply. You can get these in a whole variety of different voltages and amperages. Fortunately, most LEDs only draw a small amount of current, typically 20 milliamps or 0.02 amps. The power supply I'm using here is rated for 12 volt, 5 amp. So you can already see if all I need is 0.02 amps per LED, and I have a total of 5 amps, I can add a lot of LEDs using this power supply. That said, we still have to figure the resistance. So how do we figure what resistor we need using parallel wiring? Well, it's sort of the same. Let me show you. We'll take our power supply, which is 12 volt, and we'll subtract the voltage, which is three, as each LED is only using three volts. That'll give us nine volts remaining, and we need to divide that by 0.02 amps, as that's the amperage of each LED. This leaves us with 450 ohms. Something to keep in mind when you get to your solution. Oftentimes the number, the ohms number, in this case 450, you're gonna find that you don't necessarily have that specific number in your resistors. This pack of resistors that I have here doesn't have a 450 ohm resistor, but it does have 470. And in that case, I can use that. You might also be wondering why we didn't add up the voltage for every single LED we were gonna use. And that's because when you wire in parallel, the voltage is the same across every LED. So let's say we wanted to wire 100 LEDs using this power supply. Can we do it? Let's see. We know we have the voltage we need, but how many amps will we need? In this case, we simply add the number of amps, which is 0.02, multiplied by the number of LEDs, which is 100, and that gives us a total consumption of two amps. We know our power supply will handle up to five amps. So if all we need is two, are we good? You bet. You see, it's really not that difficult. But I did tell you early on that I had some secret sauce to make things a little easier and faster for you. Let me show you that next. What if I told you there's an LED that already has the resistor selected and installed for you? Would you believe me? Well, you should, because it's called a pre-wired LED. This pre-wired LED is rated from 5 volt, 6 volt, 9 volt, or 12 volt. It has a 680 ohm resistor built in. It has a current rating of 20 milliamps or 0.02 amps, and it's ready to go. The great thing about these is they come in a variety of colors and some with flashing built in. That's right, you can purchase a fast flashing, slow flashing, flickering, or even color changing LED. So without any kind of controller or programming, you can easily add flashing lights to your project. I've used these pre-wired LEDs for years and in so many projects. I've talked about them over and over again. For me, it's a cleaner and faster way of doing things versus using a breadboard, individual resistors, wiring, and then soldering all of these things together because I just don't have the time for that. So we can wire up our pre-wired LEDs for our project here. And to save even more time instead of soldering all these leads together, I can use these Wagyu clips. Wagyu? Wagyu? Either way, these clips allow me to land the LEDs easily on both the positive and the ground for my circuit. This way, if I have to replace an LED or do any other adjustments, I can make that happen quickly and easily. Then I'll wire up the leads from my power supply and my project now has a bit of life to it. Let's be clear, I'm giving you broad strokes right here. This isn't intended to be a super deep dive into electronics. I just wanna give you enough information that you feel comfortable getting started or figuring out how you can power up your projects. 
This is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many variations of things that we didn't get into, like series parallel wiring, LED strip wiring, adding switches, or even wiring in combination of things with microcontrollers. Adding lighting to your project really makes a big difference. Working with Arduinos so that you can add moving parts with servos, animated lighting effects, and other things really take stuff to the next level. So if you want us to put more learning content like this on the channel, where we get really specific on a variety of electronics, just let me know in the comments what you're struggling with and we'll put it into action. And if you want to see how we took the simple things we showed you today and put it into a much bigger project, you can check out this video right here and we'll see you the next time we build something out of nothing.